say it ain't so. More Islamic hate preachers now at a food bank. Uh, some tuna, a loaf of bread, and a, a bit of Jew hatred and gay bashing, please. Anyway, activist and author Rahil Raza uh, is here. Looking, you see, you can you can survive in the summer and look wonderful. I you know, <laughs> where you know we're sort of uh, you know boring white guys. We just sweat. Yes. And, yes. And, uh, yes. And, and when you go in the sun, you burn. We don't. With my colouring? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, oh, do I? Well, I don't actually burn. I just go, I sort of go, like, chip-coloured. Yes. And, and uh, anyway. Like a lobster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so attractive. The, um, I mean, I wish we didn't have to do these subjects so often, but there are so many of these preachers yeah. who are invited in. And uh, I, I know that there are some Islamic thinkers in Toronto who are very cerebral, very gentle people, yes. but they're not the ones that apparently who are asked to speak. This guy is speaking at a food bank? Yes. Who is he? Well, if you connect the dots, um, this Imam Nadvi has a, con a connection to the Al Falah Islamic Center, which has a connection to Iqna, which has a connection for inviting uh, hate mongers as speakers. And so, you know, if you look at the person individual alone, you may not see anything troubling there. Mm -hmm. You know, they cover their tracks very well. But it's always connecting the dots, and that's yeah. our work to expose Islamists yeah. and hate mongers is to connect the dots. Right. And the dots lead to a man by the name of Bilal Phillips, who, ah. uh, who interestingly, has been banned uh, from many countries, uh, from Kenya, from Germany, um, is on an alert list in Britain and Australia, but Canada opens its arms and says, come to speak. And at a fundraising for a food bank. So the thought that occurs to me is, are there no secular people who can speak about the need for food, about starvation, no NGOs, uh, just somebody off the street? Well, what, what sort of, is this an Islamic food bank? Well, <laughs> it's a very good question. Yeah. I would like to ask that question. Yeah. Apparently supported by the Toronto District School Board at Thorncliffe Park High School. Ah. Now, uh, last time I read, the Toronto District School Board wasn't a branch of the Muslim Brotherhood nor were they an offshoot of Al-Qaeda, but they're certainly behaving like this because this is not the first time there's controversy supported by the TDSP. I uh, was in front of their doors a while ago about the um, congregational prayer at this very school. Mm. This, this, so, this was the Musketeria? The Musketeria right. affair, yes. Okay. So the, while I'm very concerned about hate mongers in Canada and about hate speech and uh -huh. about uh, you know, gay bashing and Jew bashing, I'm even more concerned about the Toronto District School Board because people like Bilal Phillips, we know who, we, who they are. And well, that's, I mean, Bilal Phillips, he's the man who said that homosexuals should be yes, killed? Yes, he's the so, man. Oh. I'll tell you what else he said. Oh. What else he said? There was a letter writing campaign by the women of the Maldives because he said in one of his fatwas that girls should be married off immediately at puberty regardless of their age. He mm. says music is like a drug. Mm. So it's not just one thing he says. He right. is a troublemaker. He's a hate monger. Let's just juxtapose two things here. We have an education system in this country that has said to Roman Catholic schools, you have to have gay straight alliances and yes. you're homophobic if you don't. Yet we have a school in the public board uh, that is invited a man to speak who is not ambivalent about same-sex marriage. Yes. He says gay people should be killed. I mean, this is lunacy. Well, what they're going to tell you is that they invited Imam Nadwi, who, of course, is... But, but as I said, you have to see the links. These organizations, the Al-Falah Islamic Center and ICNA, need to isolate themselves from hate mongers if yeah. they want to be in Canada. They need to totally um, distance themselves like we would. I mean, I'm a Muslim, I'm mm -hmm. a practicing Muslim, but I would n distance myself from those people who are not following human values, mm -hmm. Canadian values. You know, we have to keep reminding ourselves, no matter what their personal opinions are, we're in Canada where we don't support hate mongering. Mm -hmm. And the Toronto District School Board doesn't know this, if you and I know it. Well, tell me about them. Are they useful idiots? Are they naive? Or is there an agenda at play here? I would actually like to start questioning this. I mm. would like to know what is it that makes them lean towards a one particular religious uh, community. Yeah. The Toronto District School Board needs to shed all these, the success baggage and remain a secular institution mm. that is overlooking secular education for a diverse group of students. Why is it for, so difficult for them to do that? You know, one incident I would have thought was enough for them to understand that this is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. But now, um, I begin to question, is there an agenda? Are they just useful idiots, as you say? Um, you know, what, what is it that they're looking for? Are they afraid? What about the gay community? We, we have uh, queers against Israeli apartheid marching at the gay pride parade, and we all know Israel is the only country in the entire Middle East that has full equality for, for homosexuals. 
The gay community, I would understand if they were saying, this mustn't happen, this man believes in killing a person yes. because of their sexuality. Are they protesting? No. I, uh, <laughs> th th this is the whole problem. You don't see women's groups protesting. You don't see, well, I won't blame them because you don't see a large part of the Muslim community protesting. But, mm. you know, I would say maybe it's ignorance, maybe they don't know. So our job is to put the clarity out there and say, mm. look, look at this person. Does he represent your version of Islam? Does he represent the image of Islam that we actually carry in our hearts? No, it's not against uh, human let, let beings. Let me ask you, I mean, look, I, I've met too many Muslims to think that every Muslim believes in this sort of hatred. But tomorrow we're speaking to Ershad Manji, who just came back from Indonesia and Malaysia, that these were moderate countries. They've changed. Is, that there is a theme coming from Islam now that is very intolerant of, yes. of all sorts of people, particularly gay people. Yes, and we've discussed this before, Michael. Uh, yes, this is a phenomena that is on the rise, and the reason it's on the rise, well, it's a lot of the Wahhabi ideology, mm -hmm. it's the, uh, you know, this, this uh, total hijacking of the, the spiritual, peaceful message of the faith. Very harsh ideology, and it's growing. It's growing all over the world. I mean, I travel to Pakistan. It used to be a moderate country. Yes. It is now falling towards extremism very fast. And one of the reasons is the silence of, of the majority of Muslims, mm. is the silence of our leaders. Now, in, to, let's take this Toronto issue. In mm. Toronto, as you say, we know that there are not all the leaders, religious leaders, are um, hate mongers. Mm. Why isn't there a mass rally to say, let's not allow people like Bilal Phillips to come into Canada? You know, when Zakir Naik was invited, we lobbied to get his immigration stopped. And it did happen because mm. there was a hue and cry. People like Bilal Phillips have no place in Canada. In this, but he's a Canadian, I believe. Well, then but, he, I mean, he... But <sighs> he should be stopped. He should I believe be in freedom of speech, but th there are certain limits in terms of public safety. And, and to, to speak at a, at a group, at a publicly funded organization, the double standard is just aching. And it's, it's so obvious. Thank goodness you do what you do. Thank you so much indeed. My pleasure.